Welcome back. You're watching the 2014 North American Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game World Championship Qualifier. And we are about to get started with the final of the Dragon Duel World Championship Qualifier. As you might know, there is an all-ages event that everybody can enter, but there's also a youth event, the Dragon Duels. And both have their own world championships that are fed into by these qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Now, these last two players, Clayton Hill and Brandon Bird, they have both already qualified for the Dragon Duel World Championship this year. So this match is basically for the title of North American Dragon Duel Champion. Brandon is bringing a Trap Tricks hand and artifact deck. He's got a full complement of both Trap Tricks Mirmaleo and Trap Tricks Dianea. Along with triple Moral Tuck, one Beagle Tuck, and a surprising number of ways to destroy his own spell cards with a pair of double cyclones and a full set of Artifact Ignition. His opponent, Clayton Hill, is playing a pure Girga deck with the tech card for Girga of the weekend, which is Gen X ally Birdman. Formerly usually seen only in the Karakuri Girga variant, but extremely popular in the pure variant this weekend because it allows you to get to Ally of Justice Decisive Armor, amongst other game-crushing synchro monsters. In addition, Bird is main decking a pair of Max C, which is something that we've seen a lot less of lately, or just those cards that you can play from your hand in general, the effect bailers, the Max C's of the world. They've been showing up in a lot smaller numbers than we're used to seeing over this format. Both players are only playing two wiretap, again a card we we're expecting to see more in triplicate this weekend. And while Bird has his triple artifact ignition, Clayton Hill is also playing the popular two mystical space typhoon. A big choice this weekend. It's interesting since these are both, like they almost have identical trap counts, 16 for Bird, 17 for Hill, but they only have two wiretaps each. So a lot of these traps are gonna resolve. There's about 15 action cards out of each deck, you know, 14 and 15 respectively. And so expect a lot of face down cards. One of the most interesting choices in Hill's deck too has been mirrored by other Giga Duelists, something we predicted to see earlier on in this format coming out of YCS Chicago and into this current format, but didn't really materialize until now, which is main deck needle sealing. We've seen it a number of top cut decks, both in the main event and the Dragon Duel event this weekend. And now it's at the finals table. One random copy, just hanging out. It's going to blow up all your stuff. Especially good in Girga, where you can have a lot of set cards and you can ensure that your cards survive while your opponents are destroyed on their overextensions. Very useful against a lot of the combo heavy decks like Sylvan and Infernity to shut them down before they get a chance to get all of their combos and trap cards online. Maybe not so great against Brandon Bird's Trap Tricks Hand Artifacts, though. Not likely, I would say. But it's just one card out of 40. Both competitors shuffling up. All right, got Opening a bit of confusion roll. over uh, which dice to use. Looks like Bird's got seven, five and two, versus five and six. That's uh, 11, that's pretty good. Clayton Hill will be opening. And Hill's gonna take the first turn. Mm He's -hmm. getting last minute instructions. All right, and we're ready to go. I see Hill has the backpack tech going with him. He's not getting any of his stuff lifted. Hill contemplating his opening. Talking to himself a little bit. Pretty high pressure. I mean, even though you've won the whole trip to the World Championship thing, there's nothing that's quite more of a high pressure situation than the actual final match. And he opens up with three face down speller traps and a set monster. It's either a strong setup or a strong bluff, but imposing regardless of which of those two possibilities is true. Plays a brand of bird. some pressure on Bird to get disrupting 
Hills set up early. He starts with Artifact Ignition. Straight into Gear Gear Gear. Was unable to see what card he targeted with it. It looked like it might have been the center one in Gear 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 was chained. No. No, it was the Gear Gear Gear, yeah. which is absolutely brutal. Big, big opening lead for Clayton Hill. And Bird says Artifact Moral Talk from his deck. Now, if he's got a double Cyclone, this might not be as bad as it seems. Yeah. He could set the Cyclone and use it on Hill's turn to blow away one of those Girgianos. And if Bird has got a hand or something to attack over one of the Girgianos, he could get most of Hill's cards off the board before Hill even has a chance to do anything for his turn. But that seems to not be the case. Five face down cards. I think you might want to let him Ixies up first and then just take him on a two for one, right? Uh, I don't know if he can because of Gear Gigant's replacement ability. Yeah. I don't know if well, there's he, a way to he, form he the definitely chain didn't, here. Not, didn't pop it early, so. Well, he can wait for the Gigant to activate its effect. There we go. Now he's yep. yeah. Now he's here going go. for the Gear Gigant. We've got double Cyclone. Targeting wire tap, nice strong and artifact hit. morale talk. Morale talk will be special summoned, and now Hill is trying to change. No, okay, it looked like he was trying to change the position of his monster, which wouldn't help. And morale talk is summoned. Gear Gigan X is destroyed, and it is replaced by Girgiano, one of its materials. But that does put a big hamper in Hill's plans, even if he does have a face down Girgi armor here, since he doesn't have a level four to bring back with Girgiano quite yet. But he does have the gear armor. That was not a yep. bluffed opening. Fiendish Chain seeks to lock it down, though. Yeah, Clayton Hill matching a move for move. He would have had some strong plays still if that armor had went through, but he has the accelerator. He would have searched off of it anyways. Yeah. Going to go for another gear gear yeah. again. A lot of avenues open up here. Yeah. But still two, still two face downs. You could see a sanctum. On the bird side of the field. In fact, there's Another a sanctum. sanctum. There we go. Sanctum is special summoned. It doesn't target, but Gear Gigan X will be the card destroyed. And with that, I he can make it out of this turn the, uh, with those those two Maraltox on the field. Ah, and a mark two. Good. Mark II comes back off of the second Gear Gigan's ability. Uh huh. But now he can't match up. No, he can't match up. He's going with Gear Armor and a rank three. Soul of Silver Mountain can lock down that last Speller Trap card for as long as it's face up on the field. That's smart if it sticks. And it sticks. No chain. No response. Nothing. It sticks, but unless he gets rid of one of those morale talks, Clonster Pleiades is probably coming out next yeah. turn. Soul oh, charge will get it done. Soul charge. Soul charge will get it done if he has enough ways to get level fours, which he does. There are a number of choices here. He could use Silent Honor Arc, since both of those morale talks are in attack position. No hesitation from Hill or Bird here as they match each other step for step. Hill clearly knew all of his options after that long moment of contemplation we saw earlier before mm -hmm. he committed his cards. He goes for the third Gear Gigant, though. That's an interesting choice because it doesn't yet remove anything else. Yeah. He's probably going to go and fetch another Gear Gig Accelerator now, and then I assume we'd see the Gear Giano swap out for another level four so that he can go for one of his options to get rid of one of those moral talks. In this case, he's just trying to build the biggest field possible to avoid a potential swing back. Gear Giano traded out for Gear Gear Accelerator. Another Accelerator joins it, and now we see Silent Honor Arc. And there's the answer. Silent Honor Arc picks up one of the morale talks, but he's left his arc in attack position. We'll see if Brandon Bird can do something with that. Brief confusion on Fiendish Chain. 
I believe the Girgi armor was used for an Xyz summon, was it not? The Girgi armor it was initially played on? Yeah, no, now it's back. There right. we go. And as a result, Fiendish Chain sticks around, doesn't do anything. Which does make it a target for another double cyclone. If he were to have it and not another mm -hmm. artifact. Makes it slightly easier to play Ice Hand. First things first, though, Brandon Bird attacks over the Soul of Silver Mountain with his remaining Moral Talk, and that will free up his face down card. Doing a quick. Mass Die is still marking the face down set. No, the Soul of Silver Mountain's not there anymore. Mm hmm. The second face down card joins it. And Brandon Bird is finished with his turn. Uh, yeah. Ah, now he's noticed, and uh, Gear Gigan X has been activated again. At this point, I believe he's played two out of the three accelerators. He's got plenty of arsenals in his deck, and he's got another Gear Gigano Mark II. That'll get him a special summon from the graveyard. But first, he'll play Upstart Goblin. A smart move, of course. Searching for a card first and then using Upstart Goblin, because that way you ensure that you don't draw the card that you would have searched off of it. Instead, you get something else and the card you wanted. Girgiano Mark II summons its compatriot, and the two are combined to summon Wind Up Zen Mines. The Gigant takes out the remaining Moral Talk and direct attacks from Ark and presumably Zen Mines follow. Hill's really done an admirable job of nullifying not just one string of pushes, but really two after the double Moral Talk play. Stabilizing last turn and really leveraging it into aggression this turn. Call of the Haunted seeks to put a stop to things by taking the remaining material off of Silent Honor Arc. And that forces it to trade evenly yeah. with the special summon we're all talk instead of just sticking around. Wind up Zen Mines still tax directly though. Yeah. There are penalties for pretty much all of what Clayton Hill's doing. Uh, I mean, he clearly smelled that, that destruction effect. And he's consolidating only into cards that can protect themselves or at least punish Bird in, this pr in the process. Bird simply passes his turn, and Hill's back on the offensive with Gear Gigan, Gear Gigan X and Wind Up Zen Mines. He can afford to take the hits early here because there aren't any Gear Gigan monsters on the field for hill to summon more accelerators and potentially blow him out of the game. Remember, yeah. Gear Gigan X is not a Gear Gear monster. Bird sets a monster. Wow. Clayton Hill has mind control. With no answer to it there, that'll be enough to finish off the first game. And Bird knows it. Immediate concession. Yep. Mind Smart control, move. just a, a killer card for the Gear Gear deck. Absolutely brutal. Smart move, though, by Bird, not actually revealing what his other face-down card was. Mm -hmm. We saw earlier in the uh, Jeff Jones match that his opponent did reveal it afterwards, but that was at the end of the match. Yeah. Personally, Once you're out of the tournament, you can give away all the information you want. You no longer need it. <laughs> personally, I would never give them the information, because whenever somebody's like, oh, yeah, no, I know what you had. Show me to show that I'm right. <laughs> I'm like, No. Reaff chance. Reaffirm my assumptions and self-worth. Okay, Sherlock. <laughs> I'll make you think forever about it. <laughs> Moving into game two. Let's see. Brandon Bird has got a pair of Noblemen of Cross out, which is always popular. He's got Acid Trap Hole, also a popular pick. Uh, Xyz Universe, another popular. He's siding really heavily for Girgia. Yeah. And two malevolent catastrophe, which can also be used to get through the massive back rows of a Girgia duelist. Yep. In addition to uh, triggering a whole bunch of artifact monster plays. 
Clayton Hill, maybe not quite as well prepared on a purposeful basis, but still with a ton of cards he can be using for this matchup. Uh, Max C, if he doesn't decide to bring in his Dimensional Fissure or his Macrocosmos, which I imagine he probably will. Yeah, the Cosmos seems like a good call. Yeah. Uh, soul how Drain. Many, how many Soul Charges? Only one Soul Charge in, in Bird's deck, so that's not really much of a concern. Uh, soul Drain is good. Three Nobleman of Cross out, since he will be going first. No, no, Clayton just won. He will not be going first. Those will probably not come in until at least game three, if ever. Nope. Triple rivalry of Warlords, which is super, super hot in this matchup. The tricky thing for rivalry is going to be resolving it mm -hmm. when the opponent has all those ignitions and double cyclones. But you have to imagine he's going to bring them in. Yep. No point in not trying. I mean, I think he's going to bring in triple rivalry, dimensional fissure, macrocosmos at the least. And just be like, here's five continuous cards. You can't get rid of them all. I'm thinking cross out, dark hole. Probably one each of the acid trap hole and Xyz universe here. Might not want to bring in the second, depending on you know whether or not you're going first. Xyz universe seems better if you're going second, because yeah. your opponent will be the first one to make a power play with his Xyz summons. I think he'll bring in both the acid trap holes. Both acid trap holes. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. He's yeah. going first, so he wants to cut off the gear he armor. Yeah. And it's so good, denying your opponent the ability to search with Gear Garmer off that card. It's possibly two acid. No Xyz Universe. Even when you're not searching it for free, which Brandon Bird probably will be doing. And speaking of searching things for free, he started off the second duel with Trap Tricks Miramaleo, and that's going to get him a free Trap Hole out of his deck. He's got a pair of Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare in addition to the Bottomless Trap Hole. And if he sided in Acid Trap Hole, the acid which trap he did, yep. he's able to pull it straight out of his deck and immediately force Clayton Hill to change his game plan going into this. Yeah, that is a huge influencer that Hill's going to have to play around. Quickly reading it. The tricky thing with Acid Trap Hole is that it can stop you from using your Gear Gear Armor's effect since it is optional. Yes. You can flip it up and you get to see it, but you don't get to search your deck. Nope. You just get to see it go into the graveyard. And that Mirmaleo is backed up by five face-down cards, one of which is, of course, the Acid Trap Hole. Upstart Goblin starts things off for Clayton Hill, putting Brandon Bird up to 9,000 life points. And he has some work ahead of him. Yeah. This is an even worse uphill fight against a massive back row. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty, the answer to yeah, it. Pretty clearly phased a bit and dropped his cards a bit giving the ability to possibly see what one of them was. Nerves might be kicking in at this point. Bird's going to go ahead and get some free damage in with Mirmaleo. Yep. I thought, personally, that I had seen a compulsory evacuation device down there in that brief moment that the cards were shown. And if Bird saw that too, then he knows that basically nothing can go wrong And he knows to keep Mirmaleo. poking with the Mirmaleo. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, keep no Ixies, thank you very much. Face down card from Hill. He knows the Acid Trap Hole's there, so that could just be something like yeah. Geargy Arsenal. There's oh! Fortunately oh, oh, for Hill, oh. he's got the wiretap. Does Bird does have Brandon one? Bird, Bird does have not have answer. one. He does not. But one can't help but ignore, not ignore that that wiretap... Uh, sorry, no, that Acid Trap Hole was free. So it was nice to trade free cards against cards your opponent actually had to draw from their deck with their normal draw. draw. The Acid Trap Hole may be free, but so is everything <laughs> that that Geary Armor, is going to search it is a Geary Armor, armor yeah. is going to get. And again, Hill is playing pure Geerga. There are no hands in his deck, so the odds of that being a Geerga Armor after he fought to keep it there, exceedingly high. Now what he could do here is wait for a Gear Gigan X summon and then spring a Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare on it. Yeah. Geary Armor is slip face up. and is met with no immediate answer from Bird. Gear Geek Accelerator's the choice from the deck. And as soon as it's uh, added, Double Cyclone is flipped. Tarting Artifact Moraltak and Light Imprisoning Mirror. That's an incredible card to hit. The Light Imprisoning Mirror would have stopped Moraltak 
cold in its tracks. But Clayton Hill has the Book of Moon to put his gear gear or back face down and protect it, at least for the moment, from morale talk. Not as great of an answer as just having that light imprisoning mirror survive would have been, but still pretty good answer. A second Girgi armor joins the field, and that gives him the Girgi name that he needs to special summon a pair of Girgi accelerators. Hill looking to make up a lot of cards really fast, they, and he has the luxury of taking that risk because he's up a game. They and will link up to form Girgi and X. Loses or, the Gear Gigant to Blackhorn of Heaven. Well, they would have if it weren't for Blackhorn of Heaven. Girgi armor's back face down. Bird is up next. He tributes his Miramilio for artifact morale talk. The intent here is to clear both Girgi armors out. Forces is the fiendish chain, which is always nice to see on not your imminent Ixi summon. Does knock out one of the Girgi armors. One Girgi armor will be left. One search to hill for the one being destroyed and flipped up. Bird's got to be wondering what that last back row card is, and if a rank 5 Ixi summon would be safe here. Hill does have one Black Horn of Heaven in there somewhere, mm -hmm. but he could also have Compulsory Evacuation Device, which is what I thought I saw there in that flash. Bird's going to go ahead and or bring traffic, out Consular Trapple Nightmare, Please. too. There's at least four answers there. Oh, it's a Torrential. Ah, Torrential Tribute, another trap card with a lot of blue in the yard. Huh. Very interesting. I think he's going to save his Pleiades, or at least send it back to the extra deck. Yep. Smart move, because he may in fact have two level fives again at some point in this duel. Yep. And if he does, he's going to need it. Interesting note, Bird is also running Consular Ptolemy M7, just in case he needs to upgrade his Pleiades after it's run out of materials. Call the hunter, bring back that Romilio. Oh, that's enough for Hill. Wow. He doesn't even wait to see if Bird has a follow-up play. He just doesn't want to lose that last face-down card to the effect of Mirmilio. Again, really protecting information here. Very interesting. I that wonder was, what that card that was. That was maybe pre, yeah. Like, <laughs> what would he want to protect that much? That, was, in, that was interesting. It's got to be a side deck card. Clearly no lack of confidence for Hill. My, don't Maybe it's protecting it the rivalry? Maybe. I don't know. That would be a good thing for your opponent to not know you've got yeah. going into the final game of the Dragon Duel World Championship Qualifier. That was a gambit. I'm fascinated to see if it'll pay off. It's interesting we haven't seen Dianaya yet. Mm -hmm. Plenty of Mirmilio. You know, there's like three copies of them in there. We have not seen them. I have not seen it. wonder if maybe they were sided out. That is not a bad plan, yeah. especially if you're going second here and you want to open with as many live cards as possible. Yep. I and I is great, but not on the first turn and not when your opponent has dug in and not when you don't already have Mirmilio in the graveyard. I and I is a turn for desperation play. Not so hot. I wasn't able to see there if uh, if Brandon, either Bird or Hill, did additional side decking. It didn't look didn't like, look it like they me. did. So I'm wondering Hill about seems... the wondering about the status of Nobleman of Crossed on each of their sides right now. Well, we're about to find out here as Clayton Hill has tributed Girgi Arsenal to summon Girgi Armor. Yeah. And we'll see what he thinks the answer is based on whether or not he leaves that Girgi Armor face up. Face up or face down, yeah. Hill sets four, no, five looks, cards looks face like he's down. Leaving it. He's leaving a face up. And yes. says, I don't oh, think you have yeah, it, Brandon I don't think Bird. you have it. <laughs> There's that Mirmilio again, this time being locked down by Fiendish Chain. And it looks like Hill was correct. No nobleman. Bird does not have the nobleman, not yet. Does he Four have an acid trapple? He does not have an acid trapple. 
He would have if Fiend and Shane hadn't locked down the yeah. Melio. Yeah. Geargi Arm has slipped face up, and Geargi Arsenal is added to Clayton Hill's hand. It looks like he wants to build a gigantic wall around his life points. But it's also worth noting that the Arsenal's attack points will boost up to 1,900 as long as he has the armor in play. Geargi Arsenal is summoned. And it successfully attacks and destroys Mermelia with those free 200 attack points. Wow, and that gives him a lot of information about Bird's back row. Especially that it's not very good. Yeah, essentially. Or that it's very good against Ixie summons that aren't happening yet. The armor goes back face down, and Girgi Arsenal is tributed for another one. Another one. And that could be a really big next turn. What's even more vicious is that he can actually leave that one face up and yeah. have one face down and protect himself from all of Bird's outs. Except Artifact Sanctum. End phase Artifact Sanctum would be pretty good against this field. Yeah. I don't know. I think leaving that face up at this point is begging to be attacked. Yeah, he's going to put it down. Putting it face down, not risking the Sanctum. He, he knows if he's at least going to be attacked. He, yeah, I mean, he wants to play play out the Sanctum, outplay the Sanctum, and ensure that if he gets attacked, he's at least getting a card off of it. Call of the Hunted brings Ooh. back Mirmelio, and in a strange fit of irony, Clayton Hill attempts to use Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare against yeah. her, which does not work because Trap Tricks are immune to normal Trap Trap Hole cards. Fiend is Shane. He's got another one, though, and this time it's getting wiretapped. You know, the Whoa. interesting thing, why, why they are immune to trap holes, is because the creatures they're based on are traps and build traps themselves. They mm -hmm. don't get trapped. Mirmelio is based on the Mirmelion, or the antlion. And the reason that it appears as a child mixed with an insect is because it's the larval form of the antlion that builds all the trap holes, not the adult, which looks more like a flying thing. Not like that. Macrocosmos goes to the graveyard as a result of Mirmelio's effect and plays back to Bird who now has two Girgi armors but only three face down speller traps to deal with. So with your perspective on the trap tricks monsters uh, would you describe them as they bees in the trap? No. Dark holes played clearing the field. All right then. We see a set card for each player, followed by a pass, followed by another set card and a pass from Hill. It looks like they've run out of monsters. We'll see who comes up with something first. See whether or not the Dianias are in. Call of the Haunted comes Birds down on Bird's side. Making amazing use of that Mermelio. Yep. Or he would be if Wiretap wasn't shutting it down. Yeah. You know, wiretapping's a crime in the United States. Is it? Most of the time, you need a warrant to do it. Only law enforcement gets to do it. I'm from Canada. We're allowed to wiretap whoever we want. Makes sense, though, that it's a law enforcement thing, since it's a card from Officer Trudge of Sector Security yes. and 5Ds. Yeah. Almost inarguably... Well, no. I guess his best card to be the one that just returned on the most recent FNL list coming Monday, Goyo Guardian. I'm excited for Goyo Guardian. Me too. I think a lot of people are. There's another... Another round of Call of the Haunted. How many Call of the Hunters has he played here? All of them. Oh, that's right. He's got two, <laughs> but one of them went back into the deck yep. thanks to the wiretap. And he's drawn it again. And you know what else got wiretapped? Fiendish Chain. And you know what else is back on the field again? Fiendish Chain. It's just going to be one of those duels, isn't it? For every card that goes back in the deck, it just comes right back out. It's a it's a dramatic departure from the first two games. Like not a lot of real aggression or action happening, but certainly not for lack of trying. It's just the the sheer blow for blow matchup of these trap lineups, which, like you said earlier, are exceedingly similar. I mean, this this can happen. I think we've seen nearly all the wiretaps, though. So from here on out, those traps are going to stick. There's a two to one. I think it was two to one in terms of wiretaps. And we're kind of at an impasse here. Both players have one monster, one face up speller trap, and four face down ones. 
Nobody's going to be playing any spells unless they're already on the field. And no one seems to want to do much of anything. Emilio still locked down on Fiendish Chain. Being tributed for a face down monster. Bird again making those sort of, not sort of, very uncommon tribute plays. I'm thinking that's the one copy of Begaltek since it's the one with the defense points. Yeah. Oh, it's another Mirmelio. This time is getting Solemn Warning. Which does work against Trap Tricks. But not if the last wiretap is there. Uh. That's both of them out of Bird now. And I believe we've seen both of Hills as well. Yeah, a lot of wiretap action here for people that are only playing two. Well, so no wiretaps left for either player. And of course, neither Duelist is likely to know that. All right, acid Again, trapple. Pulling that acid search. trapple, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that, if it resolves, could really be a turning point in this one. And it's going to, because, like we said, those wiretaps are gone. Well, or one thing could stop it, though. <laughs> just taking the monster before it becomes relevant. That's yes. The one. <laughs> Let's see if Bird feels like showing us what it is. He does. It's a Gearge Accelerator. And it's being taken as Xyz material to summon. After consultation with the face down spiller trap cards, it's being taken as Xyz material to summon. Lavalval Chain. That's an interesting choice. I wonder if perhaps he's going to try to set up well, if he was going to try to set up a play with the Dionia, since he had mm -hmm. Mirmelos around. But Bottomless Trapple is going to put a quick yeah. stop to that. We haven't seen a morale talk from him yet, this duel, correct? Maybe he has... How many calls is he running? He's running two calls, and he played one twice. So he could still have a call, so maybe he was looking for, like, a morale talk call play? I don't know. I have a feeling we're not going to find it. I mean, he, he's played both Call of the Haunteds, including one of them twice. Oh, okay. My I think he's out. Gotcha. And now they are trying to decide what to do with that fiendish chain. It was, I believe, attached to the Mirmelio that was uh, stuck before, that was tributed for the face down monster. But. The monster wasn't destroyed, it was tributed, and so they come it's to the conclusion still there. that it'll be there. Yeah. The Unlike chain the Valval chain, which is not there, yeah. <laughs> it will not be joining us for the remainder of this match. Oh, it is Beagle Was the Beagle Talk. Good call. And he's just going to go for it, so you know what? <laughs> You're probably not going to do anything You're to this, so I'll hit monsters. you with it. Whack. I'm not going to have any monsters. Let's just fight with whatever we got. Really not many other options for a, an on-field beagle talk anyways to get value out of it. Might as well. Or could be baiting out another attack. Oh, that could be nasty if he's got the moral talk. If he's got moral talk and leverage him into a pair yeah. of attacks and then a rank 5, yeah. Or that could all be unnecessary if Clayton Hill just hasn't got anything to defend himself with. He's trying not to look particularly concerned about it, but you can kind of tell. Galtok attacks. Wow. And Hill's forced to use a dimensional prison on it. Forces out a prison off of Beagle Talk. That kind of gives you an idea of what else is back there. Yeah. It's not a whole lot. I wonder if he's brought in... I mean, the rivalries don't help if they've only got one thing. But that gear is what he does. needed to see. Because he, he needs needed. to get some action going without having to set anything and hitting that asset trap hole. 
You know when that'll be a lot tougher to do? Monday. Monday. <laughs> well, it's great. He's got some free Girgianos out there. Yeah. But he still has to get them past the wall. You know, you got to wonder if maybe he'll take to the battle phase first and get in any damage he can on Bird, since he's been giving him all those life points off Upstart Goblin. Well, I mean, Bird was telegraphing a, uh, a summon stop heavy back row earlier, so I don't know if this Gear Gigant's going to go through. It's not. Black yeah, Horn of Heaven shuts horn. it down. Precisely. But the last wiretap The last wiretap, okay. What's a stop to that? So we have Gear Gigant X. But there's always a chance for another essential summon stop in the form of Trap Trap Hole Nightmare. He very wisely chooses to attack first, but Bird has the Sanctum to bring back, or rather to bring out, Artifact Morale Talk from his deck. No wiretaps left here. But on the summon, and Traptrix Trap Hole Nightmare takes out Morale Talk, negating its ability. Yeah. That seemed very, very, very conscious on Clayton Hill's behalf. And honestly, Bird knew that was there because he tried to use it on the Trap Trip yeah. monster earlier. He saw it off the reveal. Maybe he didn't so see perhaps, it. Maybe maybe just we saw it. Yeah, could be just we saw it, or it could be that he has another plan. Interesting. Bird makes the attack and plays around in opposing Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare by not activating the effect of the Gigant. Very smart at this point. And you know what? You might not even need the searches. You might just have to have the biggest monster on the field and keep it there. Brandon Bird walls up with a couple more face down cards. And now that the Gigant is no longer in danger of being hit by Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare, Clayton Hill activates his ability and retrieves Girgi Arsenal from the deck. It's interesting because it was that, uh, that ability to play around Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare that's kept it out of recent events just over the past few weeks. People stopped falling for it. They started doing exactly what Clayton Hill just did. But it's back with a vengeance now as a two of in like so many of the top cut decks, main event and dragon duel. And surprise, the exact same trick that let people play around it six weeks ago still works now. Maybe they're under the impression that some of the decks like Lightsworn actually cannot physically play around it because that would involve leaving Judgment Dragon on the field. And, well, actually, yeah, no, it is impossible to play around with Judgment Dragon unless you go straight into an Xyz summon with multiples. Mm -hmm. Judgment Dragon has to activate in the end phase. So even if you skip on wiping the board, you still have to get blown up by it. I still wouldn't play it in that case. I don't I mean, think it's the right call right now. Yeah. But Lila says yeah. hi. <laughs> Random bird down to 1,800 life points after another hit from the Gigant. And this could be it. And yeah, this is, there we go. And it is. Yep, Xyz Universe. Torrential Trap Trick Nightmare Trapple that Clayton nightmare. Hill played around perfectly. A Torrential that he played around perfectly. No, the torrential was too late. I think that was the last card he drew. Yeah. No help there. Seize Universe. Not enough monsters to make it happen. Yeah. And as a result, Clayton Hill is your 2014 North American Dragon Duel Champion. He'll be heading to the World Championship in Rimini, Italy. Brandon Bird will be there too. And you can cheer them both on during the live streams of that event in August. A lot of skill demonstrated by both competitors. A lot of wiretapping. A lot of wiretapping. That is, <laughs> it's like four matches worth of wiretapping in one match. Yeah. Which didn't go so well for Richard Nixon, but, you know. I'm going to let you have the Richard Nixon joke because you let me have the Nicki Minaj joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Our next match is going to be the top 16. We're getting closer to finding out who the North American team for the all-age event at the World Championship is going to be. Just a few more rounds left. Don't miss it. <laughs> 